Hello, my name is Gavin Bamford and I'm Chair of History Hub Ulster. Today is the 103rd anniversary of the start of the Battle of Bessines Ridge in 1917. We remember all those who fought and especially those who lost their lives. I would like to welcome all of you to today's presentation given by Nigel Henderson who will be speaking on Ulster Men at War, Battle of Bessines Ridge. Thank you. Okay folks, um... This is the second in the Ulster Men at War series. Um, last week was the Battle of Jutland. Today it's the Battle of Messines Ridge, or possibly maybe more accurately just the Battle of Messines. Unlike many of the named battles of the Great War, the Battle of Messines, which was 7th to 14th June 1917, was a standalone attack by the British Second Army under General Sir Herbert Plummer. It was a precursor to the main Allied offensive that was to take part later on in the year in the Ypres salient. The attack involved British, Canadian, Australian and New Zealand troops. And the attack advanced on a 17,000 yard or 9.7 mile front, so it covered a good deal of ground. This is a map showing um, the positions before and after. The red line shows where the British line was at the start of the attack and Messines Ridge is right down the middle of the screen there with the towns of Messines and Vitsheda and so forth in the middle. Although the two Western Front divisions that had been raised in Ireland had participated in different phases of the Battle of the Somme in 1916, this was the first time that they had fought together in the same corps and literally you can see the 16th Division, 19th Division and 36th Division in Number 9 Corps. So literally uh, one wing of the Ulster Division attack was literally across the road from the opposite wing of the 16th Division attack. The Irish and Ulster Divisions um, acquitted themselves well and captured the town of Vitsheda. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the battle itself because I'm more interested in talking about the people. But just to say that it was an unqualified success and one of the very few attacks or battles in the First World War that were that could be distinctly identified as being a victory for one side or the other. The British and Dominion forces took over 7,350 German prisoners and captured 48 guns, 218 machine guns and 60 trench mortars. Some of the latter may even have ended up being awarded to towns and villages in Ulster as trophy guns. The offensive secured the southern end of the Ypres salient in preparation for the British northern operation plan for later in the year. The German historian Kuhl called it one of the worst German tragedies of the war and Hans Heinz Hagenlucke said that the loss of Messines Ridge had a worse effect on German morale than the number of casualties. So that's an indication of just how important this battle was from a uh, central powers perspective. I'm going to go into a few fatalities just to get, throw out some statistics, just to give a, a flavour for what the losses were. Commonwealth War Graves Commission records that 3,414 lives were lost from British Empire and Dominion forces on the 7th of June. And all the people I'm going to be talking about are people who died on the 7th of June 1917. So I'm not even covering the full um, scale of the battle because obviously the first day was probably the most important day. 2,155 lives, fatalities, have no known grave. That's 63% of the total losses on the 7th of June. 63% of them do not have a known grave and are commemorated on the, the different memorials to the missing. 1,792 are commemorated on the Men and Gate Memorial and 363 are commemorated on the Messines Ridge New Zealand Memorial. 321 men serving with the eight Irish infantry regiments died during the battle with 158 fatalities, 49% being from the Royal Irish Rifles alone. 133 fatalities were from the 16th Irish Division and 179 fatalities were from the 36th Ulster Division. First man I'm going to talk about is Robert James Talbot and in preparing this, this material for this talk I have tried to cover all nine counties 
and pick out at least one fatality from each of the nine counties of Ulster, uh, whilst also trying to cover the two divisions and the ANZAC forces. So Robert James Talbot was born on 27th March 1894 at Dawson Grove in County Monaghan to William Talbot and Ellen Coulson. And he was the second of their five children and their eldest son. In 1911, the family was living at Coobeer, sorry, Coobeg, um, near Ashfield in County Cabin. And James, as he was now known, was recorded as being a farmer. James Talbot enlisted in the North Irish Horse at Armagh in mid-1916 and was one of 40 North Irish horsemen who volunteered to transfer to the Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers in December of that year. He embarked for France on the 9th of January 1917 and was posted to 10th Battalion in the Ulster Division and they were stationed at Plurgsteert Wood on the Ypres front, front. Robert James Talbot was 23 when he was killed in action and is commemorated on the Menon Gate Memorial. He is also commemorated on the memorial in the church graveyard. On both the headstone and the church memorial, James's regiment is recorded as North Irish Horse. A younger brother, William, was killed in action on 27th November 1917 while serving with the 2nd Battalion Irish Guards. So basically, the family lost two sons in the space of a matter of months. Thomas Kelly was born on 28th May 1887 at Ballykeely in County Carlow to Patrick Kelly and Elizabeth Kelly. He was living at Mill Rock in Cavan when he married Kate, Katie Dempsey of Half Acre on 28th February 1911 at Cavan Roman Catholic Church. They had two children. Jane was born in April 1913 and Patrick in September 1914. Thomas Kelly enlisted with the Army Service Corps and was deployed to the Western Front in March 1915. But he was serving with 2nd Battalion Royal Irish Regiment when he was killed in action on the 7th of June 1917. He was 30 years old and is buried in the Vitsada Military Cemetery in Belgium. Kate Kelly gave birth to James Kelly on 8 September 1917 at Mary Street in Portadown. Kate Kelly received war gratuities totaling nine pounds and 10 shillings, the equivalent of 513 pounds in current terms. Pardon me. Moving on to one of the, the better known, well-known um, casualties from the Battle of Messines, Henry Gallagher, um, who was born on the 11th of March, 1886 at Arden Edition near Manor Cunningham in County Donegal. His parents were John Gallagher and Jane Park Campbell and he was the third of their seven children. His mother died of a cerebral hemorrhage at Balikin on 6 September 1902 at the age of 49. John Gallagher married Jesse McInnes, sorry, Jesse McInnes Johnson at Crossgar on 18th July 1905 at Lasara Presbyterian Church in County Down. Henry Gallagher was a company commander of the Manor Cunningham Battalion of the Donegal Regiment UVF. He enlisted with the 11th Battalion Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers on 1st September 1914 at Oma and held the rank of Sergeant when he was commissioned on 23rd January 1915. For his actions at the Battle of Albert, he was awarded the Distinguished Service Order for conspicuous gallantry in action. When other officers became casualties, he took command and led on his men with great dash. Seeing the enemy firing on our wounded, he got into a shell hole with a private and shot six enemy snipers with a rifle. Finally, he volunteered and with 20 men rescued 28 wounded men under very heavy fire. He was promoted to captain on 2nd July 1916, the day after the event for which he was awarded the DSO. On the 7th of June 1917, shortly after 5 a.m., when the shell fire was only 30 to 40 yards ahead of the advancing troops, Henry Gallagher was hit in the left arm by a shell fragment, but kept his company advance going only to be hit by another shell and was killed instantaneously. He was 30, 31 years old and he's buried in the Lone Farm Cemetery in Belgium. Captain Gallagher was recommended posthumously for Victoria Cross by his battalion commander, Lieutenant Colonel Audley Charles Pratt, 
The recommendation read, on 7th June 1917, in the Spanbroke sector, on the occasion of the general attack on the Messines Bitshaped Ridge, this officer was severely wounded before he reached the first enemy line, his left arm being broken. He threw down the rifle he was carrying and said, that's all right, boys, I'll do well with a revolver. He continued to lead his men in attack, stopping them only when they got too close to our artillery barrage and giving his commands as coolly as if on parade and as if he had never been wounded. He led them to their final objective, but just as his position, which he had gained, was being considered consolidated, he fell mortally wounded. His bravery has never been in doubt. He was the idol of his men and of the battalion in general, and wherever he led, led his men, they would follow. His example on all occasions, and on this particular day, remain as an example which will always be treasured in this battalion. It said that the reason he didn't get the Victoria Cross was that there were um, too many had been allocated to um, other battalions in in the, the the corps that was carrying out the attack. Whether that's true or not, I cannot possibly comment. Henry Gallagher is commemorated on the family memorial in the graveyard at Crossroads Presbyterian Church and at, at First Ray Presbyterian Church where there are two stained glass windows erected in his memory. One of the, um, one of the windows was erected by the congregation, the other window was erected by the regiment. He's also commemorated on a, uh, a tablet erected by the Manor Cunningham Company of the UVF and on the congregational memorial tablet. So basically he's commemorated on six places in the six uh, tablets or memorial stones in the one location. His medals and his death penny are held at the Enniskillings Museum in Enniskillen. Jeremiah McDade was born on 8th May 1873 at Creve near Letterkenny to Charles McDade and Bridget McGowan, being one of their eight children. He was deployed to second Inniskilling Fusiliers on the Western Front on the 26th of May 1915. And at that stage, he was 42 years old. He was serving with 7th Battalion in the 16th Irish Division when he was killed in action at the age of 44. And he's buried in the La Latiri Military Cemetery in Belgium. His next of kin was a brother, Bernard McDade, who re received a war gratuity of nine pounds and 10 shillings in December 1919. William John Kerr, or John William Kerr, depending on the records you look at, was born on 2nd January 1898 at Letton near Tempo in County Fermanagh. His parents were John Henry Kerr and Matilda J. Withers, and he was the sixth of their eight children. William was a member of the Tempo unit of the Ulster Volunteer Force when he enlisted with the Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers. Due to his age, he was placed in the 12th Reserve Battalion. He was deployed to 9th Battalion on the Western Front in October 1916. William Kerr held the rank of Lance Corporal when he was killed in action at the age of 19. He has no known grave and is commemorated on the Menengate Memorial in Ypres. His father received a war gratuity of £7 in December 1919, which would equate to approximately £378 in current terms. His brother Robert, who had been killed in action on 1st July 1916, aged 20, and he was serving with the 11th Battalion of the Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers. So again, a family that lost two sons in the space of a year. James Robert McClelland was born on 26th November 1896 at Kilronan near Lisnesky to Samuel McClelland and Matilda Hetherington, being the 10th of their 11 children. The family lived at Kingstown House and Samuel McClelland was a wealthy farmer and a grocer. James McClelland enlisted with the Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers on the 9th of October 1914 and was deployed to France with the 11th Battalion in October 1915. James McClelland sustained gunshot wound to the right ear during the Battle of Albert and was admitted to the Second General Hospital on 4th July 1916. Lance Corporal James Robert McClelland was 20 years old when he was killed in action at Messines. 
He is buried in the Spanbroek Moulin British Cemetery in Belgium. He's also commemorated on the memorial tablet in Holy Trinity Church of Ireland in Lisnesky and on this family memorial in the church graveyard and my thanks to Tony Watson for providing this photograph. His father received a war gratuity of 12 pounds, 12 pounds in November 1919, approximately 648 pounds in current terms. William George Hill was born on 20th March 1893 at Low Cross in Cookstown to Alexander Hill and Ellen Ruddy, being one of their nine children and their second son. His father was a stonemason and the family lived at Donaghy near Stewartstown in 1901 and at the Downs townland near Tullyhoge in 1911. The family was listed as belonging to the congregational denomination. William Hill was living at Canterbury Street in Belfast when he enlisted with the Royal Irish Rifles. He was deployed to the 14th Battalion on the Western Front sometime after the 31st of December 1915. Corporal William George Hill was 24 years old when he was killed in action at Messines and he's buried in the Spanbrook Moulin British Cemetery. He's also commemorated on the Roll of Honour for the Belfast Corporation Ward, Belfast Corporation Gas Department. And that is the Roll of Honour for the Gas Department. And that's on display in Belfast City Hall on the first, first floor of the Rotunda, along with another memorial tablet which covers all the members of the Belfast Corporation who died, including um, William George Hills, so who was actually commemorated on two different memorials inside Belfast City Hall. John Joseph Rush was born um, to Francis and Mary Rush. Um, he was born at Derry Lauren, Cookstown, 26th December 1894, and was one of 15 children. By 1911, only eight of those 15 children were still living. His father, Frank Rush, worked on the railways and the family lived at Killymoon Domain in Cookstown. John Rush enlisted at Cookstown, joining the Inniskillings on the 20th of November 1914. He was 19 years old. Um, when he died having attained the rank of corporal and he was serving with the 8th battalion royal inniskilling fusiliers when he was killed in action at the um, at the battle of messines manus alexander costello was born on 16th february 1888 a son of patrick costello and jane scullion who farmed land at balaki in county londonderry in the 1901 census, the family is recorded as Cushley, and that is also the name on the register of births. In 1911, um, Manus was working as a tailor, and he was living in Londonderry when he enlisted with the Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers at Oma. He was posted to 7th Battalion on the Western Front sometime after the 31st of December 1915. He was 29 years old when he was killed in action at Messines, and he's buried in La Latterie, military cemetery in Belgium. His father received a war gratuity of six pounds in October 1919, which is approximately 324 pounds in current terms. His mother received a pension of seven shillings and sixpence a week from September 1917 until April 1919. In, that, in current terms, that would equate to 31 pounds per week, dropping to 25 pounds per week and then to £20 per week due to inflation. Robert James Gordon was born on 24th August 1893 at Lisley to Thomas Gordon and Thomasina McMullen. Thomas Gordon, the father, died on 3rd February 1903 due to a head injury sustained when he fell from his horse when it bolted on the night of 31st January. Robert Gordon was living and working on the family farm at Lisley in 1911. He then emigrated to New Zealand and was working as a farm labourer at Danavirk on North Island when he enlisted on the 29th May 1916 at Trentham Military Camp. He left New Zealand in September 1916 as part of the 3rd Reinforcement and was posted to 4th Battalion New Zealand Rifle Brigade on the Western Front on 27th February 1917. Rifleman Gordon was 23 years old when he was killed in action at Messines and he's commemorated on the Messines Ridge New Zealand Memorial. 
is also commemorated on the Roll of Honour for First Kilray Presbyterian Church in County Londonderry. Thomas Winton was born on 3rd April 1898 at Tobermore to John Winton and Mary Martin. And he was one of their six children and their second son. His father was a farm labourer and his mother died on 22nd December 1908, three weeks after the birth of their sixth child. In 1911, Thomas was a servant for the Kelly family in Tobermore and he enlisted with the Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers in Londonderry. He was posted to the 10th Battalion on the Western Front sometime after the 31st of December 1915. Private Winton was 19 years old when he was killed in action and is commemorated on the Meningate Memorial in Ypres. He's also commemorated on this memorial tablet in Tobermore Presbyterian Church. William John Finn was born on 9th June 1893 at Ballybrick near Banbridge to Henry Finn and Margaret Ann McNabney, being the eldest of their eight children and their first son. His family lived at Laurel Vale in 1911 and Cochrane's Hill at Mullahead in 1901 and 1911. And like his father, William was a linen weaver. His mother died of pulmonary tuberculosis on the 8th of December 1912. William John Finn was a labourer and living in Govan, Govan Road in Glasgow when he enlisted with the Royal Irish Rifles on 28th November 1916. He was posted to 2nd Battalion on the Western Front on 21st April 1917. He died two days before his 24th birthday. He is commemorated on the Meningate Memorial in Ypres. His family moved to Belfast and were living at Paris Street in the Shankill area during the war years. Robert Houston was born on 8th July 1891 at Black's Court in Lurgan to John Houston and Sarah Ann Carson, being one of their 11 children. His father was a plumber and the family was living at Wellington Street in 1911. Robert was a winding master and signed the Ulster Covenant at Lurgan Town Hall. He enlisted with the Royal Irish Fusiliers and was posted to the 2nd Battalion on the Western Front in March 1915. He held the rank of sergeant in the 7th 8th Battalion, part of the 16th Irish Division, when he was killed in action at Messines. He was 25 years of age and is commemorated on the Meningate Memorial in Ypres. His father received a war gratuity of £16 in October 1919, and that's approximately £864 in current terms. His mother received a pension of seven shillings per week from December 1917, and that would equate to £29 a week in current terms. William Barry Ritchie Miller was born on 15th November 1891 at Ballygowan. His parents were John Miller and Mary Rainey, and he was one of their six children. Barry Miller worked for Riddles, hardware merchants and ironmongers in Donegal Place in Belfast, and his colleagues there presented him with a gold watch before he left for Australia in August 1913. He was working as a commercial traveller when he enlisted on the 4th of July 1915 at Liverpool in New South Wales. He served with 13th Infantry Battalion at Gallipoli between November 1915 and January 1916. He was serving with the 45th Infantry Battalion when he was promoted to Corporal in August 1916. William Barry Ritchie Miller was 25 years old when he died and is commemorated on the Meningate Memorial in Ypres. He is also commemorated in the memorial window in Ballygan Presbyterian Church and on a family memorial in the church graveyard. Patrick Joseph Gagan was born on 12th March 1882 at Coos near Banbridge to John Gagan, a foundry owner, and Sarah McGowan. He married Margaret Diamond on 7th January 1904 at Tullylish Roman Catholic Church. Patrick was a four-man iron molder when he enlisted in the Northumberland Fusiliers at Newcastle upon Tyne on 26th July 1915 at the age of 33. He was posted as a deserter on 2nd October 1915 and he fraudulently reattested with the Royal Irish Fusiliers on 10th February 1916. Following incarceration for desertion, he was retained in the Royal Irish Fusiliers in May 1915 and posted to the 1st Battalion on the Western Front in August 1916. 
He was injured during the August phase of the Battles of the Somme 1916, and he served on the home front from October 1916 to April 1917, when he returned to the Western Front, being posted to the 7th 8th Battalion in the 16th Irish Division. Patrick Gagan was 35 years old when he died, leaving a widow and four children under the age of 11. The youngest child was three years old. His widow received a war gratuity of six pounds and 10 shillings in December 1919, which is approximately 351 pounds in current terms. She also received a pension of 28 shillings and nine pence a week from 24th December 1917, and that's approximately 35 pounds per week. Hugh Lindsay was born on 23rd June 1895 at Cross Hill near Killade to David Lindsay and Mary Rainey, being one of their 10 children and their youngest son. The family was living at Main Street in Crumlin in 1911 and Hugh was a woolen twister in a local factory. He enlisted with the Royal Irish Rifles and was deployed to France with the 11th Battalion in October 1915. Hugh Lindsay was a Lance Corporal in a Lewis Gun section when he died at Messines at the age of 21, and he is also buried in the Spanbrook British Cemetery. Some of the fatality sources record that he was killed in action on the 8th of June, but the Commonwealth War Graves Commission holds 7th June. He is commemorated on the memorial tablet at St Aidan's Church of Ireland in Glenavy. His father received a war gratuity of £11.10 in December 1919, which is approximately £621 in current terms. He also received a pension of eight shillings per week from 22nd January 1918, which is approximately £26 per week in current terms. Samuel McCafferty was born on 3rd August 1893 at Back Lane in Lisburn to Matthew McCafferty. McCafferty and Mary Quinn, being one of their nine children and their eldest son. The family lived at Key Lane in 1901 and at Linen Hall Street in Lisburn in 1911. Samuel was a shoemaker when he enlisted with the Royal Irish Rifles on 18th August 1914. He landed at, at Anzac Cove with 6th Battalion on the 5th of August 1915. This was the first service battalion from Ulster to see battle action in the Great War. He was admitted to hospital in Gallipoli with dysentery on 25th August 1915 and was evacuated to Malta and then to England on 13 September. He was trained, treated as at an infirmary in Dublin from 20th to 30th October 1915 and was transferred to the 3rd Battalion in October 1915. He landed at Rouen on 25th May 1916 for service on the Western Front and was posted to the 2nd Battalion. He was 23 years old when he was killed in action at Messines and is buried in the St. Quentin Cabaret Military Cemetery in Belgium. That's his headstone. Following his death, the personal effects returned to his family included his identity disc, a rosary, a brass box, a watch and chain, two knives, and part of a cigarette holder. His father received a war gratuity of £13 in November 1919, approximately £700 in current terms. David Main was born on 4th February 1896 at Nelson Street in the Dock Ward, and his parents were Blackwood Main and Margaret Miller, who had previously been married to Alexander Murphy, who had died in April 1895. Margaret Murphy, née Miller, married Blackwood Main in September 1895. Blackwood Main died of diabetes at Beer Street on 17th April 1903. Margaret Main, formerly Murphy, born Miller, married Charles Henry Kane, a naval pensioner, on 26th July 1911 at St Anne's Parish Church in Belfast. Charles Henry Kane was killed when HMS Alcantara which was built at Harland and Wolf Shipyard in Govan, was sunk in combat with the German armed merchant cruiser SMS Grief. That was on 29th February 1916. David Main had enlisted with the Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers and was posted to the 7th Battalion on the Western Front sometime after 31st December 1915. 
He was 21 years old when he was killed at Messines, and he's buried in La, La Laterie Military Cemetery in Belgium and commemorated on the memorial tablet for St. Paul's Church of Ireland on York Road. His mother, having been widowed three times, was living at Hannah Street when she received a war gratuity of nine pounds in December 1919, approximately 486 pounds in current terms. The final uh, case that I want to look at is Thomas George Wortley. And he was born on 5th November, 1883 at Brennan Street in the Shangle area to John Wortley and Isabella Prow being one of their 11 children. In 1911, the family was living at Broom Street. His father was a waymaster for the Midland Railway Company. Thomas was a sheet metal worker when he married Hannah McBride from Artana Street on 28th June 1914 at Christchurch Christ Church at College Square North. Their only child, Mary Isabella, was born on 9th March 1915. Thomas Wortley enlisted with the Royal Irish Rifles and was deployed to France with the 14th Battalion in October 1915. Sergeant Wortley was 33 years old when he died and he too is buried in the Spanbrook Moland British Cemetery. His body um, had been found by his brother, Richard Wortley, who was also part of the burial party. In the course of a letter home, Richard wrote, Tom was in command of the first platoon. He was wounded in making his way back when he was hit in the head by shrapnel and died instantaneously. The bodies belonging to the division were all buried in one grave with a very large cross marking the spot. It was our own chaplain conducted the funeral service. You can guess it was a scene I will never forget. I never felt so proud with all so sad to know that he died in defense of the women and babes at home. Tom and I attended the church service last Sunday, which I will keep, which I will remem remember forever when we handed our lives and our souls into God's safe keeping. Captain Reverend J. Knowles of Manor Cunningham conducted the service and he wrote to Mr. Wortley saying that his son was a good soldier, deservedly popular, and had proved himself, himself faithful unto death. It was a great ordeal for the boy, i.e. Richard, to be present at the burial of his brother. Locally, Thomas Wortley is commemorated on the War Memorial Organ at Jenny Mount Methodist Church, which was lost when the church was destroyed in a fire in January 2003, the memorial tablet for Belfast Corporation, and on a family memorial at St. Nicholas Church of Ireland in, in Carrickfergus. Hannah Wortley and her four-year-old daughter Mary left Ireland on 21st August 1919 on SS Columbia to join her mother who was living at Frankford near Philadelphia. In September 1920, Hannah Wortley received a war gratuity of 10 pounds, six shillings and eight pence, approximately 507 pounds in current terms. That brings the formal part of this presentation to an end. And as is usual, we will now, um, or I will now take questions. Thank you.